Why did God tell Hosea to marry a prostitute? Hosea was instructed to marry a prostitute, which was as shocking then as it is now. Hosea 1, 1 1-2, Amplified Bible The word of the Lord that came to Hosea the son of Beeri in the days of Isaiah Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go, take for yourself a wife of prostitution and have children of her prostitution. For the land commits great acts of prostitution by not following the Lord. However, in order for us to comprehend this story, we need to first comprehend the social climate that existed throughout the historical period. It was a time that was both affluent and peaceful. Hosea was a prophet of God in the Bible. His book is the first of the twelve minor prophets in the Old Testament. The time period of Hosea's preaching corresponds to that of the divided kingdom. After the days of David and Solomon, the people of God fought a civil war and split in two. His occurrence approximately 250 years after the time of King David and approximately 650 years after Israel first entered the land that had been promised to them. Hosea was one of the longest serving prophets in the Bible. During the lengthy reign of King Jeroboam II, Israel saw unparalleled levels of independence and wealth as a direct result of the nation's success in a number of military wars. However, as Israel's prosperity increased, the moral fabric of its society collapsed. There was a widespread culture of corruption and moral decay. Israel started attributing God's accomplishment to Baal and worshipping heathen deities. The Israelites abandoned their covenant with God and no longer obeyed his laws. Hosea 8.1 Put the trumpet to your lips. Like an eagle, the enemy comes against the house of the Lord, because they have violated my covenant and rebelled against my law. They abandoned their faith in God and instead sought partnership with other nations. In the eyes of the Lord, Israel's idol worship and unfaithfulness was equivalent to spiritual adultery. The people were solely concerned with their own pleasure, and they had lost all interest in concepts such as justice and righteousness in favor of lawlessness and anarchy. There were financial swindles, bribery, corruption, and even the judiciary was tainted. There was no justice in the courts unless the judges were bribed. In spite of the fact that this event took place 2,700 years ago, there are striking similarities to the civilization of the present Western world. In point of fact, worshippers in the Temple of Bethel and Samaria had relations with male and female prostitutes in the mistaken belief that this would convince God to bless their harvests. Even worse, they constructed a golden calf at Bethel, which was a clear violation of God's commands that graven images are forbidden. If God had decided to start over with a new people instead of dealing with them, he would have been within his rights to do so. However, he was married to the people of Israel. He was determined to keep the covenant he had made with them. However, he was unable to ignore their behaviors and pretend it wasn't happening. The very first thing that God said to Hosea was relevant to his own life. This is how God almost always works. It's possible that Hosea would have preferred it if God had given him a message about someone else instead. However, before the prophet can speak to the nation, he first has to hear from God himself. The word God had for Hosea wasn't easy. Hosea was told to take a prostitute for a wife. Why? For the people of the nation had committed a serious act of adultery by turning their backs on the Lord. Through his command to Hosea, God brings to life a consistent picture used throughout the Old Testament. In this picture, the Lord is the husband of Israel, and their passionate chronic attraction for idols was like the lust of an adulterer. His people were as unfaithful as a prostitute was. Through this clear illustration, we get a sense of how our idolatry and contempt for the Lord must make God feel. When we put anything in front of the Lord, it wounds him in the same way that unfaithfulness wounds the innocent spouse in an adulterous relationship. By commanding Hosea to take a wife of harlotry, God will put Hosea in the place where he feels what God feels, 
and it won't feel good. To symbolize Israel's adultery with Yahweh metaphorically and movingly, Hosea married a prostitute. Gomer, Hosea's wife, was chronically unfaithful. She became pregnant and God instructed Hosea to name their children with prophetic names that spoke of the Lord's judgment of Israel. Hosea obeyed God and married Gomer and soon they had a baby boy. God told Hosea to name the boy Jezreel. In the Bible days, names had meanings. In its original Hebrew, Jezreel means God scatters. God warned Israel that they would be dispersed in the upcoming judgment. Unless the Lord commanded it, we may safely believe that Hosea would never have wed a prostitute. Obedience on his part to follow such a demanding directive was impressive. Gomer did not give up her vocation as a prostitute once she married Hosea, as will become abundantly obvious. It wasn't that Hosea found a fallen woman and through love and kindness restored her to virtue. He married a prostitute, probably in the vain hope that she would repent of her immorality and commit herself solely to him. It is highly likely that she gave every indication that she was committed to Hosea, but after some time passed, and with her life in a tough place, she once again returned to prostitution. It is possible they were just bored. Perhaps it was of a feeling of neglect. Perhaps it was out of a sense of need. Sadly, we share the same inexcusable reasons for our idol tree when we prefer another god to the Lord God. Historically speaking, prostitution is generally cited as the oldest profession. Indeed, it has always been a common way to make money, even in the biblical times. Prostitution is a sin, according to the Bible. Proverbs 23, 27-28 says, For a prostitute is a deep pit and a wayward wife is a narrow well. Like a bandit, she lies in ways and multiplies the unfaithful among men. How could these two worlds mix and become one? Well, it would be a lesson that would teach many for centuries. On top of God's warnings, two more disasters occurred in the area. It was as if God wanted to get their attention. A natural disaster, this was more than a minor earth tremor. Imagine what Hosea's neighbors thought of this action. A young prophet marries a prostitute and says, The Lord has commanded me to do it. I believe that his friend said, Ha! That's what he says. I wonder what the real story is. But God has indeed told Hosea to marry this woman of the night. As a result, Hosea was the last chance prophet sent to Israel, warning them of what God would be forced to do if they did not repent and return to him. Hosea 1, 6-9 Then Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. And the Lord said to Hosea, Name her Lo Ruhama, not shown mercy. For I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel, that I would ever forgive them. But I will have mercy on the house of Judah, and will rescue them by the Lord their God, and will not rescue them by bows, swords, war, horses, or horsemen. Now when Gomer had weaned lo Ruhama, she conceived and gave birth to a son, and the Lord said, Name him Lo-Ami, not my people. For you are not my people, and I am not your God. The name Lo-Ami means not my people. Every call to this unfortunately named child reminded Hosea and everyone else that the people of Israel had pushed away the Lord God and should no longer be considered his people. Since Goma did not give up her prostitution, there may have been a cruel irony in the name Loami. Maybe the child in question wasn't actually Hosea's child, but someone else's. The message God had to deliver to Israel through Hosea was hard enough, but God also made Hosea have to live it. Through the prophet Hosea, God claims that Israel had abandoned him to pursue prostitution, wine, and new wine. And he makes it quite apparent that both the men and the women were engaging in adultery, with cultic prostitutes in worship of false gods. Goma was a fitting symbol because of the nature of the idol tree that the people were practicing. Their spiritual adultery was resulting in actual physical adultery. Hosea says that God will remove the names of the Baals from Israel's mouth and betroth her to him forever in righteousness and justice, in steadfast love and mercy. 
In numerous places in the Bible, the concept of adultery and prostitution are employed as metaphors to characterize people who are unfaithful to the Lord. A significant number of the prophets portrayed the people as spiritually disloyal to the Lord, to whom the people belonged. In the New Testament, similar language is employed in Revelation 17:2. She with whom the king of the earth have committed acts of immorality, and the inhabitants of the earth have become intoxicated with the wine of her immorality. Despite the fact that God has promised judgment, the days of judgment will not continue on indefinitely. Following the day of judgment, there will be one that is filled with blessings, prosperity, and increased abundance. Hosea 1, 10 to 11. Yet the number of sons of Israel shall be like the sands of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered, and in the place where it is said to them, You are not my people, it will be said to them, You are the sons of the living God. Then the sons of Judah and the sons of Israel shall be gathered together, and they will appoint for themselves one leader, and they will go up from the land, for great and glorious will be the day of Jezreel. God would fulfill the promise of lo -Ami, but the judgment would not continue on indefinitely. Israel will one day turn again to the Lord, and they will once more be referred to as the sons of the living God. This marital tragedy in the life of prophet Hosea is used as a backdrop for God to teach the tremendous lesson of His love for His people. God loves us with an infinite love. Hosea had a life of deep sorrow with sunless days and sleepless nights because his wife, Goma, had been unfaithful to him, and she was making plans to return to her old way of life. Many people have the misconception that it's not a huge concern to stray away from the Lord, but the story of Goma's life after she leaves Hosea's house reveals that it is more challenging than she could ever have imagined. To help their mother, Hosea appealed to his children directly. Notice Gomer's painful departure. Hosea 2.5 For their mother had committed prostitution. She who conceived them had acted shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers, who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Almost like a movie, I can picture Hosea on the day Gomer left. Her suitcase was ready to go. Didn't even say goodbye to the kids. Most individuals drift away from the Lord because they are yearning for the satisfaction of basic needs and desires of their hearts, and they mistakenly believe that they may find those satisfactions in the world. The devil has a keen mind. He can convince people that if they follow him and venture into the world, they would be happy. But the cold reality is that you can't find lasting joy if you turn your back on the Lord. The world offers no real joy. Goma's Fall This is the beginning of Goma's problems. When she went back to her life of prostitution, everything at first appeared to be going swimmingly well for her. However, we shall find out that she was following a path that was headed in the wrong direction. Hosea was fighting Goma every step of the way. God also fights his wandering children at every step. As the situation in her life continued to deteriorate, Goma made the decision to go back to her first husband. She was saying, I will go back to Hosea. When I lived with him, things were going much better for me. The Desperation of Goma The celebration came to an end. Anxiety started to set in. Concerns intensified. And then the feelings of regret set in. Hosea 3 then the Lord said to me, Go again, love a woman who is loved by her husband, yet is committing adultery, as the Lord loves the sons of Israel, though they turn to the other gods and love raising cakes. So I purchased her for myself for fifteen shekels of silver, and a homer and a letech of barley. Then I said to her, You shall live with me for many days. You shall not play the prostitute, nor shall you have another man, so I will also be toward you. For the sons of Israel will live for many days without a king or leader, without sacrifice or memorial stone, and without ephod or household idols. Afterwards, the sons of Israel will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and they will come trembling to the Lord and to his goodness in the last days. 
The incident reflects the posture of Jesus Christ when he forgives, restores, and offers a new life of freedom to the woman caught in adultery. This event is a reflection of the attitude that Jesus Christ takes towards the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. He forgives, restores, and offers a new life of freedom to the woman. Hosea also foreshadows how Jesus Christ would one day redeem a sinful world by paying the price with his own death on the cross. The prophetic book gives us assurance of God's love for us that is unending and unchanging. Yahweh's love is eternal. His enduring faithfulness is not like human love, which might solemnly swear to do something and then go back on its word. Even in our unfaithfulness, God never stops loving and cherishing us and he always makes a path for us to be reconciled with him. It's no surprise then that Hosea means Yahweh has rescued or salvation. In Hebrew, it is the same name as Joshua. Both Hosea and Joshua are related to the name Yeshua, meaning to save, which in English is Jesus. God chose to teach the entire nation a lesson through the life of Hosea and his wife Gomer. It was possible for Hosea to say to his people, Look, you have made yourself prostitutes with all kinds of pagan gods, just as Goma has made herself a prostitute with other men. However, God still loves you and has forgiven you, just as I have forgiven Goma and am now married to her. According to the observation of one commenter, his affection for her was a beautiful equilibrium of loving tenderness and severe judgment. It's hard for me to conceive of a more dramatic approach to convey the depths of God's love for us and how he redeems us from our unfaithfulness to him. If a husband forgives an adulterous wife and brings her back to his home, that is not an easy act. What does the Bible say about adultery? The word adultery is etymologically related to the word adulterate, which means to render something poorer in quality by adding another substance. Adultery is the adulteration of marriage by the addition of a third person. An adulterous relationship is one that is voluntarily pursued by a married person with another person who is not that person's spouse. Are you going out on your commitment to God? The Bible itself begins with a great marriage. Genesis 2:24. For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Hosea could have judged his wife very severely. Under the old covenant law given to ancient Israel under the theocracy, the punishment for adultery was death. Leviticus 20:10. The man who commits adultery with another's wife, even his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress, shall most certainly be put to death. It's important to note that the punishment was the same for both parties involved. There was no double standard that made allowances for a man's dalliances. He was punished right along with the woman. Sometimes people forget their first love and in so doing become adulterers. The Proverbs also outline the character of an adulterer. Proverbs 7, 22-23, Amplified Bible. Suddenly he went after her, as an ox goes to the slaughter, not knowing the outcome, or as one in stocks going to the correction to be given to a fool, until an arrow pierced his liver with a mortal wound, like a bird fluttering straight into the net. He did not know that it would cost him his life. Finally, the proverb writer comes to this terribly grim conclusion about adultery. Many are the victims she has brought down, her slain, are a mighty throng, her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the chambers of death. Reading the warnings in Proverbs should instill fear in anyone's heart. Although the Old Testament law's punishment for adultery seems harsh, the spiritual consequences are even more severe. The story of Hosea and Gomer is an unforgettable picture of God's strong, unending love for his covenant people. The unending love of God is a consistent motif that runs throughout the entirety of the Bible. There are numerous opportunities to express gratitude and appreciation for the Lord's steadfast love through the book of Psalms. Psalms 36, 5 
Your loving kindness and graciousness, O Lord, extend to the skies. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Psalms 13, 5, Amplified Bible. But I have trusted and relied on and been confident in your loving kindness and faithfulness. My heart shall rejoice and delight in your salvation. One of the most astonishing examples of unfailing love in the Bible is present in the book of Hosea. As terrible as the acts of his wife was, Hosea forgave her. Romans 8, 38-39 reminds us, For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present and threatening nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He is the faithful companion of our kinsman redeemer. He is the prophet who buys back his wayward bride. He is the father who patiently waits for his lost kid. He is the one who brings home the prodigal son with gladness. Since the beginning of time, the recipients of his grace, ever renewing mercy and everlasting love have been sinners who do not deserve it and who are prone to drifting away from the right path and doing wickedly. We read something that should also fill us with hope. Hosea 2, 19-20, Amplified Bible. And I will betroth you, Israel, to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice, in loving kindness and loyalty and in compassion. I will betroth you to me in stability and in faithfulness. Then you will know, recognize, appreciate the Lord and respond with loving faithfulness. God's words to ancient Israel should fill us with hope today. Even though it is very difficult, we should see ourselves in Goma. Even though it is wrong to engage in prostitution, God is nevertheless able to forgive those who engage in this immorality. The Bible records his use of a prostitute named Rahab to further the fulfillment of his plan. Because she obeyed, she and her family were able to receive rewards and blessings as a result. In the New Testament, a woman who had a reputation for being immoral and a sinner found an opportunity to assist Jesus while he was staying at the home of a Pharisee. The woman acknowledged Christ for who he is and then presented himself with an expensive bottle of perfume as a gift. The woman sobbed as she expressed her sorrow and repentance before Jesus. Then she poured perfume on his feet and wiped it off with her hair. When the Pharisees criticized Jesus for accepting this act of love from the immoral woman, he admonished them and accepted the woman's worship. Because of her faith, Christ had forgiven all her sins and she was received into his kingdom. In order for Hosea to comprehend the emotions that God feels, God put him through a truly unique experience. God frequently prepares a prophet through his relationships or lack thereof. God told Jeremiah not to marry because he would have to tell Judah that God, too, was now a bachelor. Because he was single, Jeremiah experienced the emptiness that God experienced when Israel was absent from his life. Ezekiel was told that his wife would die, but that he should not cry for her in order to show Judah that God, too, had suffered the loss of his wife. In a similar manner, God taught Hosea how he felt by having him carry out some peculiar instructions pertaining to his marriage situation. Hosea found her, brought her home. He then courted her and began his life with her as his wife all over again. Take note of the following phrase. She had no idea I had given her grain, new wine and oil. She assumed that everything came from her lovers. Her blessings, however, were indeed from God as channeled through Hosea. It's interesting to note that God's final words in Hosea are a very tender, emotional plea, hoping that Israel will repent and allow him to delay the judgment that he must carry out. To begin, we must acknowledge that Hosea did not succeed in reconciling Israel to God. Their messages were ignored, and God was forced to judge the people as he had promised. Assyria defeated them and exiled them in 721 BC, never to return. 